the hell she wants to do it, Cole! Pro wrestling moves aren't actually meant to injure anyone, but accidents happen and sometimes people get hurt. Some moves seem to go wrong far more than others, and these are the worst offenders. Wild Bill Longson is credited with innovating the pile driver, which sees a wrestler hoist an opponent upside down and spike them on the mat. The danger comes from potentially compressing the opponent's spine by dropping them on their head. The move is banned in many territories worldwide, leading to a disqualification or even a fine. Jerry Lawler performed the move, which was forbidden by Tennessee's Athletic Commission, on Andy Kaufman in 1982. The comedian wore a neck brace in public to sell his injury, including during their infamous confrontation on Late Night with David Letterman. Well, uh, I'm not in uh, as m nearly as much pain as I was, and it's, it's healing, but uh, it's still enough to wear the brace. Uh -huh. During an Intercontinental Championship defense in 1997, Owen Hart hit Steve Austin with a sit-out tombstone, which left the Texas Rattlesnake temporarily immobile. While on tour with New Japan Pro Wrestling in 1992, Austin had broken Masahiro Chono's neck in a similar fashion. The injury caused Austin to miss most of 1997 and contributed to his early retirement in 2003. WWE banned all pile driver variations in 2000. Under questioning in the House of Representatives in 2007, Stephanie McMahon revealed that only two wrestlers, almost certainly The Undertaker and Kane, were exceptions. She said, They are two of the stronger guys, superstars who have done these maneuvers for a long time, really know how to do them safely. CM Punk used the move in a 2013 Raw match with John Cena. Vince McMahon was reportedly furious upon witnessing his top draw in such a position. When asked about management's reaction, Punk tweeted in 2020, people were mad, but if you really think about it, they're big babies. The curb stomp was innovated by Naomichi Marafuji. A wrestler runs towards a staggered opponent and places their foot behind their neck to drive them into the ground. Seth Rollins adopted the move from Marafuji, using it as his finisher. While Rollins was WWE World Heavyweight Champion in 2015, the move was banned. During that time, Rollins tried several other finishers, including the pedigree and fan-dubbed Rain Trigger. On an episode of Talk is Jericho, Rollins explained that children imitating the move at home could spark lawsuits. There's also the liability for head trauma, and with WWE facing a concussion lawsuit at the time, they wanted to avoid any liability. The move's name is a reference to a real-life violent act in which someone's head is smashed against an actual street curb, reported in numerous acts of racial violence. On Martin Luther King Jr. Day in 2014, Rollins pinned Big E with the move, which Big E noted in a tweet was then called the blackout. The embargo on the move was lifted in 2018, with Rollins using it to win a match against Finn Balor on Raw. Rollins explained to the rap that he convinced Vince McMahon to reinstate the move on one of the chairman's good days. The name was shortened to just the stomp. Alternative versions of the move have been used by Super Dragon and Simon Dean. Mondo Guerrero is credited with inventing the moonsault press in which the performer, usually jumping from the ropes, faces away from their opponent and does a backflip onto them. The move was popularized by Lanny Poffo and the Great Muda with several variations from the likes of Ultimo Dragon. Once the ace of Japan's FMW, Hayabusa's career ended after a botched springboard moonsault on Mammoth Sasaki. Hayabusa was unable to rotate completely and landed on top of his head. He spent most of the rest of his life in a wheelchair, regaining his ability to walk after surgery in 2011. He died at 47 in 2016 due to a brain hemorrhage. Chris Jericho, who popularized the move in the US as the Lion Salt, nearly met the same fate but was saved by Kurt Hennig. Jericho posthumously thanked Hennig in a 2013 tweet. Indie wrestler Charade went viral after suffering a fractured skull from a failed moonsault. Beyond Wrestling held a fundraiser, raking in $1,200 for his medical bills. Lance Archer suffered a neck injury in an AEW tournament match with Eddie Kingston, landing on his head after a moonsault. He was off television from October 2021 until the following January. On Busted Open Radio, Archer thanked the AEW medical team for helping him recuperate, saying if some factors were different, I probably would have been paralyzed or dead. Um, so beyond blessed that that didn't happen. Harley Race is credited with inventing the diving headbutt, accidentally performing the move after falling from the top rope, but adding it to his arsenal upon hearing the crowd's reaction. Notable users include Dynamite Kid, Chris Benoit, and Brian Danielson. Benoit, in particular, performed headbutts off cages and ladders throughout his career. Tomoaki Homa performs a variant of the move, which sees him stiffen up and plunge onto his opponents. People who have performed the move regularly have suffered head and spinal trauma over the course of their careers. 
Ray opposed to the use of the move, blaming years of landing on his abdomen for causing future health problems. Dynamite Kid suffered numerous spinal injuries, which combined with his drug addiction, left him in a wheelchair by age 40. Danielson retired in 2016 due to concussion and neck problems, returning to the ring in 2018 after being cleared by multiple doctors. Honba suffered damage to his vertebrae after taking a hangman's DDT in 2017. Benoit sat out most of 2001 due to a spinal injury and his 2007 murder-suicide death is theorized to have been linked to CTE. Kurt Angle, however, has disputed claims of the move's liability for head trauma. Angle claimed on his podcast that the worst thing Benoit endured from performing the move is the whiplashing to your back and neck. The Burning Hammer was first used by Kinta Kobashi against Mitsuharu Misawa in October 1998. Kobashi hadn't beaten Misawa on this big of a stage, so it was a last ditch effort to get a win over the ace. Kobashi performed the move only seven times in his career, getting the victory each time. The danger of the move comes from the recipient having to land on their head and shoulders, risking severe spinal injury. The King's Road style became increasingly dependent on these dangerous spots, with many of its practitioners now suffering from health problems. Head bumps are believed to have contributed to Misawa's early death in 2009, with an autopsy reporting he had sustained years of cervical spinal trauma. The maneuver was allegedly banned by WWE, but modified variants have been adopted by Tyler Rex and Trent Seven. These versions allow for the opponent to rotate with greater control and ensure it can be executed safely and regularly. In the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic in 2016, Brian Kendrick performed the move on Kota Ibushi to the surprise of even the commentators. AJ Styles did a burning hammer during an episode of Raw in September 2021 to defeat Riddle. Uh-oh, AJ! Oh, hammer! The Amazing Red is credited with creating the flip pile driver in a match with Joel Maximo. Petey Williams popularized the move in TNA, making him a standout among the fledgling X Division. Originally subject to WWE's pile driver ban, the company has softened on its stance in recent years. Rey Mysterio and Chelsea Green were given the green light to use the move. With only months of training, Bad Bunny used the Destroyer during his WrestleMania 37 match. Even veterans like Ricky Morton and Dustin Rhodes have used Destroyers despite being in the twilight of their careers. The move is actually increasingly common. Williams and Gail Kim took to Twitter to complain about its overuse. Even so, the move is still dangerous. The person taking it is required to do a backflip with their opponent's weight on their neck. At a November 2018 GCW show, Marco Stunt broke his leg on a stool while crashing through a door during a destroyer performed by Eli Everfly. During the death match in Colorado, Benny Cumberbatch was critically injured after taking a Canadian destroyer off a balcony through a pile of debris. Primo's Premier Pro Wrestling used its tournament proceeds to cover Cumberbatch's medical costs alongside a GoFundMe. Megumi Kudo is credited with creating the Kudo Mei Valentine finisher, known to most as the Vertebreaker. The setup is complex. A wrestler underhooks their opponent's arms from behind and drops them on their back in a seated position. The person taking the move is unable to protect themselves as they land on their back and neck. WWE banned the Vertebreaker in its efforts to avoid neck injuries caused by pile drivers. When asked by a fan on Twitter why he stopped using the move, Hurricane Helms answered, I pled my case for about 30 seconds, realized it wasn't going to go my way, so I just said, okay. In an interview with Fightful, Helms went into more detail. There was only about three people I could even pick up yeah. at that particular time. Everybody was gigantic back then, so it wasn't a big deal for me. During a WWE Live event in 2016, Seth Rollins used the move on AJ Styles. The footage got tons of attention as the first instance of a vertebraker in a WWE ring in over a decade. This bridging fallaway suplex sees the user put their opponent in a powerbomb position. Rather than dropping them forward, a performer bridges backwards to drop their opponent on their head and shoulders. Since the move lacks the same control as a traditional powerbomb or suplex, there is a risk of spinal injury, especially if the person performing it doesn't do a proper bridge. Kota Ibushi and Samurai Del Sol are known to use the move. In an interview with Fightful, Kevin Owens explained that his decision to stop using his variation, Steenalyzer, came down to safety measures. And it's not a move you want to give people uh, that work that hard and put their bodies through that much uh, punishment on a daily basis. Yeah. In 2018, Dragon Lee challenged Hiromu Takahashi for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. 
The match was nearly halted when Lee overshot Takahashi during a Phoenix Plex. Reports from Fightful claimed Takahashi had suffered a broken neck despite retaining the title. In an interview with New Japan Pro Wrestling's website, Takahashi recalled believing his career to be over but persevering through the match. Takahashi returned just over a year and a half later at Power Struggle to challenge Will Ospreay for the title. The Styles Clash is synonymous with AJ Styles, who has used the move since his days in NWA TNA. Rather than doing the typical thing and tucking their head, the person taking the move is expected to tilt their head back. The first major accident involving the move was in a 2003 TNA match with Frankie Kazarian, with another instance in 2006 involving Sterling James Keenan. Cage Side Seats reported that at a January 2014 Ring of Honor taping, Roderick Strong landed on his head and was treated for his injuries by medics. Strong was forced to withdraw from an Evolve show held later that month. That April, Lionheart suffered a broken neck from a botched Styles Clash. In November of that year, Yoshi Tatsu suffered a neck injury from the move, requiring surgery. First used in WWE by Michelle McCool as the Faith Breaker, the Styles Clash was reportedly subject to a ban due to its track record of injuring wrestlers. Styles contested the rumors of the ban in a March 2016 tweet. Chris Jericho claims to have helped get the ban lifted, selling it to Vince McMahon as that cool move that AJ does where he drops you on your face. The safety of the buckle bomb is dependent on the spacing in the ring and timing of the performers. If the person taking the move doesn't land on their feet, the brunt of the impact is on their spine and neck. At Night of Champions 2015, Sting challenged Seth Rollins in his first WWE Championship match. Rollins used the buckle bomb on the icon and the match was halted. Medical staff tended to the veteran and the bout continued with Rollins retaining. Sting suffered a neck injury, calling it a freak accident on Bill After's podcast. He said he holds no animosity towards Rollins, but the injury would mark the end of Sting's WWE in-ring career. He headlined the 2016 WWE Hall of Fame after only four matches, though he did return to in-ring action in AEW in 2021. At SummerSlam 2016, Rollins took on Finn Balor to crown the first ever Universal Champion. Outside the ring, Rollins hit Balor with a buckle bomb on the barricade. Balor, who would go on to win the match, suffered a shoulder injury and relinquished the title the following night on Raw. After the injuries to Sting and Balor, Rollins faced a smear campaign calling him an unsafe worker. Like Sting, Balor didn't blame Rollins, considering how years of wear and tear are often the real cause of many injuries. During a Raw match in April 2020, Nia Jax attempted a buckle bomb on Kyrie Sane. Sane was sent neck first into the bottom turnbuckle. Sane was luckily not injured, but there was a precedent for similar accidents, and the move has reportedly been banned in the company.